chilling rain is finally here. Be sure to let me know if you pulled anything good and as always like and subscribe as I'm going to be posting lots of chilling rain content over the coming weeks here. But starting off the content we have Ice Rider Calyrex VMAX. This is a super aggressive and super fun deck as well out of the new set. It's really surprised me just how powerful it really is. So let's get into the deck profile as well some battles with it. Of course we have to start off by looking at the brand new VMAX Pokemon here which is the Ice Rider Calyrex VMAX. We do have two very powerful attacks. The main one that we will focus on however is Max Lance. For 2 water energy you deal a pitiful 10 damage but you can discard 2 energy from this Pokemon or 1 energy if you want. But you deal 120 damage for each water energy you discard. Now it does cap out at the 2 energy but dealing 250 damage is still a huge amount and very good pressure in the early game as you'll see this is a very aggressive deck and very efficient as well. We do also have a nice first attack in Ride of the High King. If your opponent has a full bench then you get to deal 160 damage. Even if they have a couple of Pokemon, you can typically do an average of 130, which is a very good amount of damage and is certainly enough to knock out a VMAX after you use that Max Lance attack. So we'll have to have a look at the other combo cards that we've received in the new Chilling Rain set. The main one, of course, being Melanie here. This is a new supporter card, which has some similarities to Welder, but is definitely not as powerful. It allows you to attach a Water Energy, from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon V, and then you also get to draw three cards. So this is how we're going to reuse Max Lance every single turn, because we do discard both of the energy from Max Lance, but on the following turn, we can attach one from hand and then use Melanie to deal 250 damage once again if we need to. But like I said, for the most part, you're not going to be doing 250 damage every single turn, because you just don't need to. Now we do have a bunch of partner Pokemon here, the main one being the Inteleon line. We have one copy of the Shady Dealings Inteleon. Shady Dealings, of course, allowing us to search your deck for two trainer cards, put them into our hand. That is going to give us the consistency that we need in order to search out all of our trainers and good key cards. And we also have two of the Drizzle here with Shady Dealings also, but you only get one trainer card from Drizzle's Shady Dealings, which is still very powerful and as you'll see is very good at keeping your consistency up. And then we also have one of the new Rapid Strike Inteleon from Chilling Rain. This is great as this ability puts two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon and really helps out against the tag team Pokemon where you can deal 250 damage and then use this Inteleon to finish off the knockout. Especially good against things like Mewtwo and Mew GX as that does have 270 hit points. And if we have a look at the rest of the deck, we have a couple of the Denny in here to improve our draw in the early game with the Deddy change. Very good at opening up in the early game as we want to be as aggressive as possible. We have a Marshadow in here in order to clear out our opponent's stadiums, mostly chaotic swells though as you'll find out in a second, and we do have a copy of Mew from Unbroken Bonds in order to protect our bench of course since there's a lot of bench sniping attacks in the new set. Now we have a bunch of new cards as well as the Melanie. We also have the new stadium card, Path to the Peak. This shuts off abilities of Rillbox Pokemon. I have three copies of this as it is so powerful and it's really going to help out in a range of matchups. So as you'll see it stops things like the Denny, Crobat, Eldegoss and often your opponent will just forget that that's what this card does and they're going to be putting down these Crobats and Tedennies without realising that their abilities aren't going to work which is very good but also just in a bunch of matchups like the Shadow Rider Calyrex which has a very strong ability you're going to get to turn that off as well so that's why we have a high cost of the stadium and we also have a bunch of Crushing Hammers to also up our disruption and being able to slow down our opponent while also being aggressive can really help out in a bunch of matchups that are looking to deal a huge amount of damage. Things like Eternatus, things like 
uh, metal decks that we're going to be weak to, that sort of thing, we can take advantage of Crushing Hammer to even the playing field a little bit and disrupt our opponent. And everything else is just consistency based really. We have our Quick Balls and Evolution Incenses to get our Drizzles and Vmaxes. We do have two Capacious Buckets to get our Energies of course which come in very useful. And the other thing, I guess, is the two copies of Pal Pads, which I've opted to put in the deck here. This is just so that we can really consistently reuse our boss's orders, as well as our Melanie. As you'll notice, we aren't playing any Marnie, because we just want to be drawing through our deck and using our Drizzles to pick out the key cards that we need at any given point. And then, of course, I do have one copy of Uterine Board, just to give us the free movement on our Inteleoner. Mew, whatever it is that happens to go into the active spot. And we do have 10 energy to finish this off, which is a very reasonable amount. I've found that it's not too much, not too little, just enough to get us through and continuously using that max lance attack. And of course, you can always attack with Inteleon here as well if you need to, but I haven't personally been able to use it just yet because you don't get the acceleration from Melanie. So. Let's get into a couple of matches here, show off just how aggressive this deck is out of the new set and I can assure you it is extremely powerful and super good against pretty much every deck. You do have some difficult matchups like the metal matchups that are going to hit you for weakness but besides that pretty much every deck is up for grabs with the Ice Rider Calyrex so let's check it out. Alrighty, game one here, we don't have a very good hand whatsoever. We're going to be forced to attach an energy onto the Mew, just so that we can have the opportunity to retreat it easily without finding our U-turn board. And we do also lose a bunch of crushing hammers, which is definitely not ideal. We could hold on to this quick ball to get another Dedenny on the following turn, or alternatively we just get our Ice Rider here. I think I'll hold on to it for now though and just pass over to my opponent, see what they have for us, see what kind of deck they're playing and take it from there. If they're playing a particular kind of deck we might want to hold off on the Dedenne and then obviously it'll be better if we did get the Ice Rider but it's not really any pressure to do anything just yet especially since my opponent did start with the Dedenne GX here. They did discard the Lightning Energy so it could be a couple of decks potentially a Picarom deck, or it could also be a Rapid Strike deck, the new Rapid Strike Pokemon. There is the Rapid Strike Bullies again, so it is definitely that particular deck. Now, they will be playing the Zero Oro, which allows them to do a bunch of damage to our bench, and the Mew is going to be coming in very important in order to protect against that. So we'll have to get a Retreat here. And we do get another Sobble, which is fine, I'll take that. Let's go for a Crushing Hammer, we unfortunately miss it. And we'll just quick ball discarding the Marshadow. Let's see if the other Dedenne is in here, which it is, which is very good. I'll attach onto the Sobble and then use Deadly Change. And we'll just be looking for an Ice Rider that we can get going here and evolve into as quickly as possible. We can also put down our Stadium. I would like to keep our Mew around, um, so I think we will be retreating here, so that we can actually protect it. And I will just retreat into the Sobble, that seems fine. Why not do 10 damage as well, could be relevant, you never know. Mainly just retreating into this one though, since we can retreat on the following turn, or on these coming turns, since we do already have an energy on here. And the Sobble having 70 HP means that my opponent can't knock it out with the first attack on Blaziken, which just deals a total of 60 damage. They will have to get that second attack off to get the knockout, which is fine by me. They're going to be discarding an artillery as well with the quick ball here, which is definitely a good discard to see, as that's going to stop them from getting that into play unless they're playing multiple artillery, which they could well be doing. And they're most likely going to be looking for some more Rapid Strike Pokemon here, most likely the Urshifu or the Zero Aura. Now they are just getting neither of those though, and they're getting the Eldegoss. They're going to be heartbroken because they realise that they can't use it with our Stadium Path to the Peak, as that prevents Real Box abilities, so my opponent's just going to skip up there. Let's hopefully get into a proper game in the next one.
Game 2 here we have an interesting start to say the least and we are up against a Corviknight deck which is not going to do it very good for us since we are going to be hit for weakness and my opponent can easily get knockouts here. Hopefully we top deck a supporter card though or some sort of card to get us out of this horrible hand. There is a Mari from my opponent so exactly what we need here. Uh, the Path of the Peak is not going to come in quite as useful as the previous game unless we were able to get one down early and stop them from using their Zashians that are most likely going to be putting into play but other than that it's not going to be nearly as useful as the last game and cause my opponent to rage quit, we'll have to see. Also interesting that my opponent uh, chose not to attack us for some reason. They could have done 60 damage there with our weakness but they opted not to do that so we get the opportunity here to do a crushing hammer, we can attach and I'll go for the Professor's Research of course because if we get the VMAX we could easily just take a knockout on this Corviknight V and that is exactly what's going to happen here. We don't have much else that we can do, I suppose I'll make use of the Evolution Incense to get the other VMAX just so that we can thin the deck of a card and hopefully get into some better draws here. But I'm absolutely going to take this opportunity to get the knockout on the Corviknight V before they're able to get some more energy into play. Now we are going to be losing energy on our side as well, but my opponent has a pretty small hand with not much to work with, so I don't really mind losing the energy. And there we go, we get the Melanie off of the prizes, so we can easily get a water energy and put that onto the active as well as one from our hand. That's going to give us the ability to attack once again. My opponent did have the professor's research in their hand, so that small hand wasn't any too big, of, too much of a big deal for them because they could easily just draw some more cards here. And uh, they do have the energies coming in with the metal saucers. We're going to see a GX attack, most likely. Yep, there's the GX attack from my opponent, being able to reduce damage done to their Pokemon. It's definitely going to help them out big time. Let's use our Quick Ball here. I'm going to discard a Water Energy and grab a Sobble, I think. It's going to be a good shout so that we can get towards our Inteleon. And of course, we're going to use our Melanie. Put that energy onto the active as well as one from our hand. And we could use a Quick Ball as well. I kind of like this, so we'll Quick Ball away our Dedenne and grab another Sobble so that we can get our Drizzles out. We do have all of our Druzal and our other Inteleon. Most likely we're going to lose this one in our hand from the Professor Research on this following turn, but that's going to be fine because we can always get it back with Super Rods, and as long as we have the other one in the deck, then we can always make use of that. So there goes our attack, doing 220 damage. Not the most amount of damage since they are reducing it by 30, but at least we can get a substantial amount in here. And the Lucario Melmetal is of course a basic Pokemon, so my opponent can't use Cheryl on that like they can with the Corviknight VMAX. But they might be using a Mallow and Lana, or a couple of those in their deck potentially. Not any in the discard pile just yet, but we know that they could potentially have them in there somewhere. Although using a Professor Research of course means that they can't use Mallow and Lana. And my opponent is just going to be hitting us for 100 damage with that attack getting energy onto itself from the deck. And uh, yeah, hitting us for weakness is uh, never a good feeling. We don't have another melody, so we unfortunately can't get a big attack off here to get the knockout. We'll just have to start attaching onto our benched VMAX and pull the trigger on this professor's research, hoping to get into a Drizzle as well as some other useful stuff. We just see a couple of crushing hammers which could actually come in useful if we get heads. And I'm going to be taking the energy off of this Lucario Melmetal. My opponent does have the bronze on so they can easily move the energy around anyway. Uh, Mew's not going to be all that useful. I'll hold on to the Capacious Bucket as well just in case my opponent uses a Marnie or something. We'll keep that around in the deck. And there's not really anything else that we can do so I'll pass it over to my opponent. Don't really want to put down the other Ice Rider V in case my opponent goes for a boss's orders play on that. Let's see, we go uh, Metal Saucer from my opponent again. 
do they have the attachment from hand as well or are they just going to be working with the energy which is in play already they are moving one to the active and they do have the attachment from hand so that's going to give them a knockout with the Lucario and Melmetal and we should be in a reasonable position still they are going to be taking a first knockout on their end to take three prize cards but we can get a follow up knockout with our backup VMAX and that's going to be removing four energy off of my opponent's board making it so that my opponent will need a metal saucer to get an attack off and they only have one remaining so it might be tricky for them to actually get an attack off with the Corviknight VMAX here let's see what we top take the crushing hammer let's see yes we get ahead so we're definitely discarding that energy from the VMAX there absolutely ideal crushing hammer heads and we'll put down our other V I'll go ahead and use capacious bucket now just to thin the deck we do only have two water energy left which is a little unfortunate but we can make it work now my opponent does have let's see here 40 HP remaining so if we do our first attack that's going to be a total of all oh, math is hard man we have 70 they're reducing it by 30 so we're going to do exactly 40 damage if we use our first attack, so definitely going to go for that. means that we don't have to discard any energy, and we can get the knockout quite easily that way. Let's take our three prizes, we get a Sobble, another VMAX, and a U-turn board, so nothing too useful. Definitely need a supporter card to help us out here. And if we topped out boss's orders, that would be even better as we could just win the game but let's see my opponent has the Zation as well as the metal, metal Saucer which is their last Metal Saucer and it also have the attachment from hand but like I said getting that head on Crushing Hammer is going to make it so my opponent can't actually get an attack this turn and they are going to be moving the energy anyways from the looks of things picking it onto the Zation now we do have to be careful here because all my opponent has to do is get one more knockout on our VMAX in order to win the game. So we'd really like to sacrifice perhaps a Sobble or promoting a Remu potentially. We do get a Drizzle, so I think that yeah that is gonna be game we did top deck the Drizzle. Like I said we only need bosses orders so we can bring up that Bronzong so we can use shady dealings here. Here you go this is how the deck comes in so useful or the Intel ones come in so useful I should say as you can just get whatever card you need out of the deck and we're actually able to get a win against a deck that has type advantage against us as they're hitting us for weakness but yeah there you go just being super aggressive my opponent missing turns being able to not keep up as our deck is super aggro get a nice victory there let's get into one more game and see how that goes Starting off our last game, we're up against a mirror match here. As you can see, we both have the Ice Rider Calyrex. So I think we're in a pretty good position overall since we do get to go first here. And we have the turn one attachment, which is pretty much all you need with this deck. Now we do also have the Drizzle, so we can certainly make use of that, as well as a bunch of crushing hammers here. My opponent's not going to be able to get enough energy into play to actually combat our nice start that we have here. All they can do is attach an energy and use Melanie if they have that available to them. But it looks like they are realising that they don't have a whole lot going on so they are going for a switch into Sobble. And they don't even have an energy attachment either so we're actually in a very good position here. Let's go and use our Drizzle. That's going to get us a card out of our deck. Not really sure what I want to take here though. There's so many options and there's not really any one card that we need right now. I think we will just take the Quick Ball though, since it will get us a, another basic Pokemon. So we'll go for that and we can play out our Evolution Incense of course to grab ourselves the VMAX and start doing some big damage of the alternative art is there. So of course we have to take this one. Looks much better. And we have the Capacious Bucket that we can play out to get energy. We're going to take both energy and well we can only attach one. The other one can go into the discard pile in order to get combo with our Melanie of course. My opponent giving us an angry face there because we have such a good start. Let's quick ball for another Sobble. A bit unfortunate that we are losing one of our pal pads. 
but it's fine because we're in such a phenomenal position here we shouldn't really mind doing that too much. We'll put down a, another Calyrex V and we will just be hitting our opponent. Now we aren't doing enough with the first attack so we do have to discard an energy here which is not too bad since we do have the Melanie in our hand to be honest. My opponent doesn't even have the energy attachment on that previous turn so we should be fine here. I mean, they could get the uh, VMAX, which they do have. If they're able to discard energy, they could get an attack off here. But they are going to be using Professor's Research, which is definitely not a Melanie. So they can only attach one energy here. And they're going to be extremely far behind in order to keep up with us. They get a Quick Ball discarding a Mew. And that's going to get them another Sobble. And we have a very good hand here. Like I said, my opponent trying to use a Tool Scrapper, which doesn't really affect anything since we have U-turn board. We can just immediately play it back down. And we'll play down our second VMAX here as well. We can attach to the active. And we are going to be swinging with the active, so I think we will use our Melanie onto the active. So that we have that additional energy on there. We do get a Path to the Peak, which could potentially be good. I think I'll put it into play since we can stop my opponent from playing anything like the Denny or Crobat. And we'll go ahead and hit into them for 250 damage. Of course, my opponent can only hit us for 250 damage back. And then we will be able to get the knockout on our following turn. We'll be in a very dominant position. And we do see my opponent getting the Drizzle of their own, which is going to grab them any trainer card of their choosing. Let's see which one they go for. They could go for a Crushing Hammer if they're playing them, but no, it's a Boss's Orders, which is an interesting choice. Let's see if they're going to bring up the other VMAX. They are. They want to hit into this one and hope that we don't have the energy, which we certainly don't at the moment, which is a very nice play for them. And they are going to be discarding one energy from Lux and doing 130 damage is definitely a reasonable amount. We have our Mew that we've top decked. Not something that I want to be putting into play though. I think we'll put down a, another Calyrex V and we'll just go for the Professor's Research. Losing a bunch of cards here but none of them are all that relevant. I'd really like to get towards some other stuff that we can make use of here. We do get into a Crushing Hammer which I'll use. Unfortunately a Tails. And we do have the Drizzle as well, so I'll put this down so that we can get a Capacious Bucket. Let's see how many water energy we have left. We do have quite a few, so that's good. We can get our Bucket and grab ourselves some energy. And my opponent's likely going to get a Knockout on us, so we'll just be attaching our energy onto the bench here. And we do also have our Inteleon that we did get. So we can use this to get some extra energy into play, or not energy, sorry, damage into play onto the board. We could put it onto the active here, it's going to require us to deal less damage to the active overall. And we can just quick ball as well, but there's not really anything that we need to quick ball for, so I'll just hold the hand and pass over to my opponent. Like I said, we can just sacrifice this VMAX and then go into our benched VMAX, which is completely fully HP and uh, we can get a knockout here. Let's see what the last card is in my opponent's hand. Are they going to play it? Nope, they're not. So they have a dead hand and they're going to be relying on their prize cards here in order to get a reasonable hand. At least hope so anyway. But since we are already ahead, we can get this knockout like I said. Now my opponent has, let's see how much HP they have, 270. So they have 50 HP remaining. We could just poke them a little bit, we could use our Inteleon, we'll have to see here. We can promote the Inteleon as well, since it does have the free retreat. Let's Melanie to start things off, since we can draw three cards. And we do get into some good stuff here. Let's Evolution Incense, and grab ourselves the other Inteleon. And we can use this to get out two cards from our deck, of course. And we're going to be going for the Ordinary Rod, I think. My opponent doesn't have any energy, so we don't need a crushing hammer. And we'll also take the I think we'll take the boss's orders here. Since we already have energy. Don't really need any of these other cards, so we'll take the ordinary rod. 
and we can always shuffle in a VMAX. And there's not really anything else that we want to shuffle in, I guess maybe energy. So we'll go with that. And we want to do both. And like I said, we'll shuffle in a VMAX. And I guess a Mew, just to get some extra damage potentially. We'll put that into the deck and put the two waters into the deck as well. And then we can retreat. We'll go into our VMAX and we do have the energy attachment as well going on to our V. Let's go and spread some extra damage with our Inteleon. We'll put it onto their VMAX on the bench or their V I should say. And there's not really anything else that we want here. I guess we'll just quick ball away the Marshadow just in case my opponent uses a Marnie or a Reset Stamp, something along those lines. Then we don't really want that in the deck. And there we go, there's the Concede from my opponent. There is not much else that they could do, I was guessing. So a very easy and convincing win for the Ice Rider deck once again. Really been enjoying this deck, it's super aggressive as you've seen in these matches. So be sure to give it a go yourself as it is super fun as well. And I'll see you in the next video.